In today's video, we're going to discuss how to succeed as a real estate investor in 2022, even with these Bank of Canada rate hikes that we're seeing. Uh, the last one was a 1% rate hike that happened just this week. So if you're new to this channel, my name is Koken and I'm a real estate investor and I run a real estate team here in the Niagara region. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about what we do, check out our beginner's guide to investing in the Niagara region in the comments below. So to get started, I'm going to start with a short clip here from uh, Benjamin Tall, who is the chief deputy chief economist at CIBC. And he did a, a very good interview that I recommend watching uh, on 30 Minutes to Wealth. So I'll have the link in the description if you want to check it out. Uh, here is the clip um, that we're going to go into and then we'll discuss it a little bit afterwards. Yes, so I will distinguish between the next year or two, the market overall, the residential market will be uh, going down, but the rental market will be uh, in demand because quite frankly, if you look at rent, rent did not rise during the pandemic. Home prices went up. So the ratio of home price to rent went to the sky. It has to go down. And that's why I believe that rent will outpace uh, uh, home price uh, inflation. But beyond that, I look at multi-residential as the next 10 years, not the next two years. Mm -hmm. and therefore, we have to look at uh, the potential of this uh, asset class, and I think it's huge. I'm very bullish on it. Why? Because whatever the supply issue we have, and we know that we have a supply issue, it's actually worse. Because we are undercounting demand in a very significant way. There are official numbers that say, okay, that's the demand for rental. How many households are renting? Now, let me ask you a question. Let's assume that you are a student in Montreal a university, university student in Montreal, and your parents live in Toronto. Census Canada, during the census, comes to you and say, are you planning to go to your parents' house during the summer, you know, when the school ends? And you say yes. The minute you say yes, you don't exist mm -hmm. because you belong to your parents' household. Mm -hmm. Re regardless of the fact that for 10 months you consume real estate, yeah. Montreal. Nobody is counting it. That's half a million units that nobody is counting in yeah. terms of demand. So whatever supply issue we have, it's much worse because the demand is much larger. We have to understand that people don't get it. And that's why this market will be on fire because we simply don't have enough units. Add to it the fact that we are building less now because of all those regulations and the yes. cost of construction. And you will have a major, major supply issue uh, and the demand is undercounted. That's why I'm bullish from a long-term perspective. Short-term, of course, things can slow down, but I believe that overall, this is a very good asset class given the fundamentals of the market. Yeah, so I think definitely uh, it's a very interesting perspective to hear from someone who is not necessarily in the real estate business. So I've heard this argument uh, and some of the points he described uh, many times from real estate investors. Uh, he mentions how um, the statistics are not accurate in terms of how, sh how much of a shortage we have in terms of rental housing because students who plan to go back home aren't counted in, in terms of how much housing stock they use. The one statistic I heard even before this was how um, undercounted immigration data is because they don't count um students right who come to study in canada the same way that they would consider permanent residents but many students end up staying in canada after with a work permit and eventually making canada their home so they use housing while they're here as students and definitely afterwards right once they get jobs and once if they decide to live in canada so from a demand perspective it's through the roof and is undercounted in many ways and on the supply side there's very little supply of uh, rental housing. If you look at the amount of rental buildings being constructed, even our business, we've been creating legal basement apartments uh, with our clients for the last couple of years. It's getting harder and harder because house prices have gone up, construction costs have gone up. So even though rents are going up as well, it isn't making the business of creating rental housing any easier. And many times, even in our minds, it's as investors, it's sometimes easier to just buy an existing duplex or triplex, rent out the apartments and not bother with the creation of rental housing, right? The creation of rental housing is a very difficult endeavor. And we do, you know, encourage our clients to create rental housing because there is opportunity there. 
but we're doing it from the mindset as investors. So if it makes investment sense, we're going to do it. If it doesn't, we're, we're going to hold off. That doesn't help the supply problem because if there's not enough supply, rental prices have to go up and that that's the only way it can work, right? So it's, it's very interesting to hear his perspective on it. So he says the next two years, the residential resale market may have some very difficult times depending on how these interest rate right, uh, hikes play out in the economy and in the real estate market. But over the long term, he's very bullish on the outlook of multifamily housing and basically owning rental properties, right? Uh, so again, very interesting perspective from someone who's not a real estate investor. So I found that especially insightful because of that. So if you're someone looking to buy real estate right now, how do you actually succeed? What are the things you can do to give yourself an advantage um, versus everyone else, but also just to protect yourself because we are in uncertain times and you do need to take that into account. You can't have the same mindset that, you know, many investors had over the last two years where just buy anything, it's going to go up in value. Don't worry about the fundamentals. Don't worry about the cash flow. Just anything is a good, any real estate is a good investment. That is not the case anymore, especially right now. There's a lot of listings. There's not a lot of great rental properties, great deals to purchase. So the one thing that I highly recommend is this. Look for fixed payment variable mortgages if you are getting a mortgage to buy an investment property. The reason for that is you can calculate your monthly payment today. And even if interest rates rise, your payments stay the same up to a certain threshold. So especially if you're getting a, a mortgage right now, it's at around 4.2%. If interest rates rise, they have to rise significantly for your payment to change. What ends up changing is the portion that goes to interest and the portion that goes to principal. The reason this is valuable is if you look for a deal that cash flows today a certain amount with this higher interest rate. And again, there's not many of them available. So you need to be very picky in terms of what you purchase. If you can find that deal, you lock in your payments over the course of the five year mortgage. If rates do go up significantly, there is again the chance that rates may go up much further from here, five years is a long enough period that we can expect the rental market to catch up in terms of higher rents. So that's one way you can protect yourself to have fixed payments, even if you do end up getting a variable rate mortgage. Personally, I'm a fan of variable rate mortgages, even though rates have risen. I still think if you can get a discount off the fixed rate, it's still the way to go. But fixed payments is definitely becoming a key factor. The next, again, like I mentioned, you this is a deal that uh, we sent out to our uh, clients uh, yesterday. And this is the first time we're starting to do this where we're sending out deals that don't cash flow based on the listing price, but we're telling our clients, if you can get this deal at this price, it will make sense. So for example, this is a property, it's a triplex in the city of Welland. You know, nice property, looks like uh, a raised bungalow style. It has two one bedroom apartments on the upper level, a large two bedroom on the in the basement. And there's a storage room that apparently can be converted into a uh, fourth bachelor unit. We're not even counting that fourth unit in the numbers. We're just running it off the three units. You can see parking in the back there um, looks like a nice, you know, commercial type of property structure. Um, and anyway, so decent triplex. Uh, we ran the numbers based on, you know, not conservative rents, not aggressive rents, somewhere in the middle. So for the one bedrooms, 1500 each, for the two bedroom basement, 1650. Uh, we're using prime minus half a percent, 4.2. And basically the way the numbers work out, this deal at 800,000 will cash flow 500 bucks a month. So basically what we're telling our clients is look at deals that cash flow and if it doesn't cash flow based on the listing price, figure out what price you need in order for it to cash flow and purchase properties that cash flow from day one. Right now, there's not a lot of them. So now is the time I wouldn't necessarily be aggressive buying everything in sight. But if something pops up like this deal, we don't know if we can get it down 150,000 from the asking. That may be a stretch, but it depends what the seller situation is, 
maybe they are buying another property or they have other things that they need the money for and if they've owned this property for the past five years they may have bought it for three hundred thousand. so whether they sell it for 950 or 800 may not make the world of difference to them if they're still going to make money at that price um, so that is what we're recommending our clients okay look for deals but make sure they cash flow from day one and as long as you have a fixed payment variable rate mortgage even if rates go up the payment stays the same so your mortgage pay down portion may go down you're still going to make that cash flow you're still going to own a quality asset that hopefully over the next five years if in interest rates stay high it will be because inflation is high if inflation is high likely rents and real estate prices will go up as well over the medium to long term so in the short term it may go down even after your purchase but as long as you don't sell when it goes down that is the key point um yeah so i think rental rates will be going up in the medium to long term we're not seeing it right now in the outskirts of the gta so where i am in the niagara region rents are going up but they're not going up in any dramatic fashion i am hearing closer to toronto rents are going up a little bit faster and the demand is definitely there um, again it's an uncertain time so I, i'm not expecting rents to spike up but as things start to normalize i am expecting rental rates to go up but again the next two years like benjamin and tall said we can't expect any crazy rate uh, rent increases or even price increases in, in terms of real estate so you have to really focus on the fundamentals you need to make sure that the property is cash flow positive from day one and if you can fix your mortgage payments without whether it's a fixed rate mortgage or a fixed payment variable rate mortgage that is going to give you space some time to figure out if rates go up further you know to be able to reset your rents maybe have a couple of tenants turnover over the next five years to allow you to then get whatever higher rent there is in order to be able to afford the higher interest rate payments so i don't believe in speculation i don't believe in buying properties that are break even or negative cash flow flow with the hope that rents will go up i'm expecting rents to go up but I still want to purchase with a margin of safety. So I want to purchase with cash flow so that if rents don't go up, I'm still good. And five years gives me enough time for you know this market to sort of normalize. And that is that breathing room that I'm looking for uh, for my next investment purchases. So hope you found this helpful. If you're interested in investing in the, in the Niagara region or even just learning more about what we do here at Team Koken, uh, check out our beginner's guide to investing in the Niagara region. Um, that hot deal that uh, uh, you just saw that I shared, that is what we do to, for our investor clients. So if you sign up for the free guide, you have the option to join our hot deals list. Every week we look for a deal that we send out. Um, so you'll be able to see more deals that we are looking at as potential investments. And you know, right now the list prices may not still make sense, but we'll still send them out and we'll tell you, okay, at this purchase price this deal will make sense and um, yeah if you have any questions feel free to comment below until next time all the best